Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, I will be sharing my build process for the redwood trees used in my Endor shelf display and diorama. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Many of you have asked about these redwood trees that were used in my speeder bike and Endor bunker reviews, and as I continue to build more props for my Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary photos, I thought this would be a great tutorial to share with the community. I am always working towards making simple but super realistic environments for my 118 scale figures, and want to offer these simple world building solutions for other collectors as well. To begin, we'll need a few things to get started. A series of acrylic paints, specifically black, burnt umber, and chromium oxide green that is used to make my go-to wash color. Additionally, we will need burnt sienna, which will be the main redwood color. We will need some paint brushes to use with these different color mixtures, as well as a mixing knife, ruler, grout, shipping tubes, moss, modeling foliage, a hot glue gun, and a separate brush to use for dry brushing. I also recommend using the shipping tubes instead of paper towel rolls. They are much more durable than the flimsy paper towel roll, but both will work well for this project. Since I need these tubes to specifically fit in my Calyx displays, I will be cutting them down to an appropriate 12 inch height, but you may leave them at their current height if you need taller redwoods for your own displays or photography. Remember that redwoods are typically very tall. After marking the tubes, I use a piece of blue tape to help guide my cut and ensure it is clean and even. Note that the cut side will likely be on top of the tree, and if this edge is not perfectly even, it should not affect the project. Next, using a sharp blade, carefully cut the excess from the mailing tube. Note that we will be using the leftover tube for a separate element in this project. Remove the end cap and place it on top of the other tree for a nice finished look. Next, we will shape the excess mailing tube to be a down tree trunk for my display. It's always important not to let anything go to waste when working on these projects. Using a sharpie, I sketch a series of shapes on both ends of the tube that will give it a shattered bark look. I then carefully cut this out using a combination of the box cutter and a pair of scissors to cut along the lines that have been marked off. When everything has been cut and ripped away, we will have a nicely shaped log for our forest floor. Additionally, I added a small critter hole at the top of the tree trunk, giving it that very classic tree look. Now that everything has been cut, remove the blue tape from the initial tree and we can move on to the next step, tree roots. In order to give the tree trunk some more dimension, we will add roots towards the bottom of the mailer tube. To do this, I will be using some scraps of XPS foam from some of my previous builds. For my original sets of Endor trees, I made the roots roughly two inches tall. I thought this looked great and was a proper height for the added dimensions toward the bottom of the trunk. Using a ruler, I then marked off several pieces of two and two and a half inch sections on the leftover strip of XPS foam, and then cut the pieces using the sharp blade. These do not have to be perfect, since we will be shaving these down and shaping them shortly. Next, we will attach the strips of foam by using a hot glue gun. I have recently invested in this model from Gorilla Glue, and it is fantastic. The glue bonds very well and dries quickly, which really helps my productivity during these builds. You will simply apply a line of glue to the piece of foam and then quickly place it onto the mailer tube, ensuring it is flush on the sides and bottoms. If you do not have a glue gun, any other adhesive that is recommended for foam will do. But note, it will require some dry time. Next, we will want to shape the pieces of foam to look less obtrusive and blend with the rest of the tree. And to do so, we will be using a hot wire cutter. Carefully shave away the excess foam as closely as possible at the top portion and move downward at a slight angle. Repeat this step a couple of times to the left, right, and front side of the foam piece, giving the roots some proper shape and texture. Don't worry if these look odd at any stage of the process as we will be covering everything with grout next. My personal go-to for this project and many other builds is this Grout by Fusion Pro, which you can pick up at any local hardware store. It already has acrylic mixed in it and it takes paint very easily once it dries. I recommend having a small container of water nearby. The moisture will help smooth out the grout for easy application. But note, you will not want to use too much water. An excess of moisture will require more dry time and we want to keep the rough appearance of the grout particles. This will add proper texture needed for our tree bark. Apply generous portions of the grout to the roots, sealing all the cracks and giving the bottom of the tree a nice cohesive look. Repeat the same process for the smaller tree trunk, covering the entire tube and the interior as well. Once everything has been covered in grout, we will need to add lines to the redwood bark. 
Using a sharp X-Acto blade, score several crooked lines down the entire tree trunk. This is a messy process and some of the grout particles will lift and fall out as the blade scores the tree. I recommend laying something down to catch all the falling debris and make cleaning up easier. You will want to score several lines crisscrossing over each other and spread out all over the tree trunk. Naturally, you will want to repeat the same process for the smaller fallen tree trunk as well and allow these to dry overnight. The paint mixture I'll be using is my go-to weathering wash that consists of burnt umber, chromium oxide green, and black acrylic paint. If you're a fan of the channel, you have seen me use this mix in a number of different world building projects. To create the redwood paint color, I will be using some burnt sienna with some of the go-to weathering color mixed in. I always keep that paint color pre-mixed for projects like these that require some nice earth tones. Once the paint is mixed thoroughly, we will need to add a generous portion of water to create our base wash. Using a large brush, spread the wash color covering the entire tree. Add some generous portions of the non-diluted paint mixture and work them into the cracks and hard to reach areas towards the bottom of the tree. Once a few layers of wash and paint have been applied, allow the tree to dry for 30 minutes and repeat the same process to the smaller tree trunk as well. The smaller tree will require the same painting treatment, but we will also need to address the interior as well. Using a small brush, apply generous amounts of the paint color to the hollowed out tree. Note this will not have to be perfect coverage since we will be going back over this with another color later on. After the initial coats of wash have had some time to dry, apply a second coat of the non-diluted paint mixture and work it into the bark. Continue to work your way around the tree, adding paint throughout. Once the second coat is added, you will really start to see the vibrant redwood color come to life, but there is still one last step needed to finish the painting process. Add a dash of chromium green oxide and burnt umber to some black paint and mix it thoroughly. Once mixed, add a generous portion of water to create a nice wash. This will create a rich, muddy color that will be used to help accent the redwood bark and blend everything together. Apply the dark, muddy color to several areas of the redwood and drag the paint downward using a dry brush method. Using the larger dry brush will not only work the paint in, but it will also spread it evenly, giving the paint a nice, subtle appearance. Once the larger tree is finished and has plenty of accents added to the bark, move on to the smaller tree trunk and repeat the same process. You will not only be using this paint color to create the same effects to the bark of the smaller tree, but it will be used for the hollowed out interior as well. This will give the smaller down tree a perfect dead and rotted out look that will really take any end or diorama to the next level. But of course we will need to add one last finishing touch. To bring everything together and give it that forest moon of Endor look, I am going to be adding some moss and diorama foliage that I got from Amazon. Both the moss collection and DIY miniature shrubs will be linked in the description down below. The diorama foliage is very brittle and little pieces fall off the block as you tear it apart or simply remove it from the package. But I always gather these bits and pieces for this type of project. Using the hot glue gun, apply a small dab of adhesive to the trunk and quickly sprinkle some of the miniature shrub particles on top. The glue dries very quickly, so you want to be as speedy as possible during this step. If there are any areas where the sprinkling did not cover because the glue dried too quickly, no worries. We will simply apply some more glue and add a piece of moss to bring everything together. I personally like the way that the two different foliage types come together and add some variety to the texture of this build. Using the hot glue gun, apply some more adhesive to the bottom portion of the tree trunk and quickly add a piece of moss to the tree. This nested piece of moss looks great and will really help the trees blend with the forest floor of my diorama and setup. Repeat the same process adding both moss and torn sections from the miniature shrub to different areas of the redwood. I didn't add too many of them, but I really liked how the small strips of miniature shrub looked. They have a vine-like appearance that has a nice end or look to it. Next, we will be repeating the same process for the smaller down tree, but we will also be adding foliage to the hollowed out interior. Naturally, the lush forest floor of Endor would make a home inside such a tree trunk. Therefore, I wanted to have this down tree full of bushes and moss. Using the hot glue gun, I applied adhesive to several areas of the tree trunk and quickly added torn sections of the miniature shrub and moss. I focused on the tops and underside of the tree where I felt the forest floor would spring to life. I finished the down tree by adding a hefty combination of torn pieces of the miniature shrub and moss to the tops and bottoms of the hollowed out interior to really make this old tree look like it was full of life. All in all, I think this small redwood turned out great and it ended up being my favorite part of the build. The amount of texture looks wonderful and it will certainly be taking my shelf display to the next level. This piece will not only look great in my diorama, but it will also serve as a perfect log for Princess Leia and Wicket to have a seat on just before they are attacked by biker scouts on patrol. 
Now that all the necessary foliage has been added to the redwoods, we will need to apply one last wash to help take away that vibrance from the bright green mini shrub pieces and help everything blend together nicely. Taking a wet brush that has been dipped into the wash color, lightly dab all the foliage. You will want to apply this light wash carefully so that the sprinkles of moss do not rehydrate and flake off. Once everything has been dirtied up a bit, we can now take a look at the finished product and add these trees to our indoor shelf displays and dioramas. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at my build process for the redwood trees used in my indoor shelf display and dioramas. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.